are here to discuss today is the structure of the oligarchy. We're talking about the people who control the world. This has been one thing that uh, has um, been hardly explained to the people how um, the money flows and how capitalism works in the international stage. So now, a few words to take note is foreign policy. Foreign policy is the interaction between one government that sees itself as the bigger government and other governments that are seen as smaller and uh, uh, influenced governments. So, on the top of this all, we have the top level oligarchy. That's when you talk about the Rothschild Foundation, the uh, all those other foundations. But who are they? They are the controllers of the world industries. Industries like uh, weapon manufacturing industry, the pharmaceutical industry, IT and communication industry, and so many other industries. Just their, their, their enormous amount of industries that they con that they control are enormous. And these people are the ones who control the political parties in all those countries they call first world countries. You know that they use uh, the world financial system. The system, world, you know, uh, media and everything to influence and control other politics, economy, people, work, labor, and everything. So these people who are the top level of the they're actually the ones who control the world. These are the same people who controlled Germany and Hitler. So these people now, today, they are the ones who influence political parties, so they fund political parties in these big nations, nations, all the NATO nations, or, you know, the first world nations, so they fund the political parties, and this is the people who also make those foreign politicians get rich. That is, they fund the political parties, and in return, what do the political parties do for them? The political parties do their bidding in-house and international. That is why Bella was talking of ITT. They call it international TT. That is the racket. So these people fund the politicians who create the foreign policy. So now they use the foreign policy to control and influence other nations. So they influence countries like Nigeria. And how do they do this? They have to do it through politicians. They control and fund the politicians. So the local politicians in all these countries are funded by these uh, political parties. And not just funding, they use the foreign policy which is, could be said by force, and they also fund opposition governments. If the government decides not to listen to their foreign policy, then they use different tactics like uh, embargoes, restrictions, and all those things to get the government to lose popularity with the people. Because when you put an embargo, the people suffer. When the people suffer, they cry out to their own government rather than the people put the embargo. So they place all those things to make the people cry out in order for the people to fight against the government. And in that place, they start to fund foreign political parties and politicians in order to, to fight the incumbent government and take them out of power so that they can continue to influence decision making and get unfair advantage within this country. They make these politicians give special rights, rights and privileges to their corporations, foreign corporations and proxies. When you say proxy, what do you mean? A lot of time you see um, 
companies that are floated by people, you know, that you know within an economy. But you, but a lot of times, those people are just fronts for foreign actors. So these foreign obituary. So these people fund these foreign corporations. In fact, they own the foreign corporations, but they fund the foreign proxies and get their profits back from these foreign um, proxies. So when they use their politicians to influence local politicians to give rights and privileges to these foreign uh, corporations and proxies, then you now have foreign corporations coming into a country, sometimes with zero dollar, use the funds from the banking system within the economy of that nation to get funded, then they do business with relaxed laws that allows them to siphon their money out of these countries into their foreign uh, owners or mother companies. So now what they are doing here is they are taking advantage of the people and they enjoy a lot of time monopoly. They enjoy monopoly against exclusive rights. Some other companies come in with rights to explore our raw materials, our natural resources. So they explore our natural resources and they take the natural resources to the foreign countries again, which are now used to provide jobs in these foreign com com countries. So now our jobs are also being stolen away. Business opportunities that come because of our natural resources, which are supposed to be processed in-house, just supposed to be processed in the country, are lost. So all, for example, we explore crude oil in Nigeria. But because these oil giants are part of the influencers, I forgot to write the oil here. The oil industry is uh, one of the biggest. So because they're one of these influencers, they get our crude oil and they take it to their country, provide jobs in the refineries, and then sell us back the refined products, which is PMS, HU, Keru, and all that, bitumen. So they sell us back the refined products. They take our raw materials, taking our jobs, taking business opportunities. The taxes are supposed to come from refining this product. The taxes are supposed to come from the amount of jobs they produce are lost from the economy. So in this process, 70% of the wealth, including opportunities, jobs, taxes, etc. is lost through this. And then this now gives these foreign politicians the temerity to steal as, as they like because this now how are these foreign politicians able to do this without the people being able to do anything? What do they do? They make sure that the masses remain poor because these masses are now struggling for for ten percent of thirty percent. Of the wealth of the country. So in actual sales, they are struggling for 3% of the wealth of the country. So during elections, they stay at the polling booths where you're supposed to vote, and then they give you money to vote. So you have a population of poor people, impoverished people by this system. Who are hungry? I'm thinking of the next food their children will eat. And on election day, they promise them 10,000 naira, and they go and vote for them, so they remain in power. So, what we need to do is to figure out how to get these people out of poverty. Because once you get these people out of poverty, 
they will start collecting the money for votes and they will stop voting these people. You know, this is a capitalist structure. But once you remove money from the politics, then these people can no longer control these people, and these people can no longer control these people who own the votes. So that is how to disarm the, 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 the connection between these three people. Because these people and these people and these people need these people. These are the masses to remain poor so that they continue, can continue to buy their votes and continue to stay in power so that they can continue to fund these people. So where the connection is now is between the local politicians and the masses. How can you cut this connection so that they cannot continue to buy their votes? Right now, the only option we have is to educate the people. Educate the people on what is happening so that the next time when they go to the polling booth, they know that the money that they're collecting is another four years of their life being wrecked. Another four years of their of, of the lives of their children and grandchildren being wrecked. They've sold out another four years of their life. But how do you educate these people to know that? Because these people and these people are using what is called information deprivation tactics. This is a tool that is used by these people and these people in order to control these people. So you see that? So how do they use information deprivation? They ensure that these people do not have access to good education. They ensure that these people do not have access to good internet. They ensure that these people do not have access to any form of information that would give them a mind of their own to think beyond whatever their religious institutions is telling them because they also control, these people also control the religious institutions. So they use the religious institutions to misinform the people. So the, the people are misinformed through the religious institutions and then so we see that all through this hunger through uh, poverty and information deprivation are the weapons used by the local politicians and the foreign politicians and political party all under the world capital holders to control the masses in several countries around the world. This is not only a Nigerian problem. This is a problem that can be identified in every population of the world that is practicing capitalism. And this is the structure by which this is being orchestrated. So like I said, information, these people need information, they need education. So the plan is, we are going local, going, putting boots on ground to ensure that information gets to these people, regardless of lack of access to information, to education, lack of access to the internet, lack of access to any form of information, and a fight against people who are bringing the information to the masses. But the effort will still continue and intensify because this has been, it's been broken. This is the chain of poverty. This is the chain that holds every black nation down. We call them the second or third world countries. That's the chain. That's it.